Truth Seekers. Hey, I'm Pastor Ronald Kozar from Alpha Lines Den Ministries in Derry, Pennsylvania. And we are looking for truth seekers. Now, why would that be? Because the Bible says that you shall know the truth, and it's that truth that shall set you free. See, I believe the church has been just kind of ignorant regarding some things, and I believe we're really living in the last days. And that's what we're preaching and teaching. So if you are a truth seeker, I would like to invite you to one of our services. So I thank you for tuning in today. So come with me as we view today's message. Yeah. 
You shall not commit adultery. You shall, shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not covet. You shall not covet. So days are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I'm going to show you in hands.
Yes, Adam? Um, the, um, the devil was going to kill the baby boy the firstborn, right? Oh, I'm talking to he. Yes. Yeah, he passed. Yep, so. he passed over the houses. That's right, buddy. That's the answer. Yep. That's good, Adam. So. You're about done, Liam. Now that's the preaching of the sin of the dogs and the evil. Amen. This is part one of a series that we're going to do on the new covenant. I don't know how long it will go, but it will go until God tells me otherwise. We've been learning a lot about the feast. We've been in the old covenant a lot, but we're going to jump over into the new. People must learn and must know how to rightly divide the word of truth. If you get too much old covenant, then you want to go back and be a Jew. If you have too much grace, then you have no old covenant. You just think that's been done away with and then you're all just grace and then you get mixed up that way also. But the Bible tells us that we got to be able to rightly divide the word of truth. You have to know what piece pertains or pertains to each area. You got to know how to rightly divide it. It's like putting together the seasonings on a, on a meal. You got to know what goes where and how much. Amen. You can't pour a bottle of salt out on something that's not going to taste good. Right, Greg? You can't be pouring salt on everything. So I, I hope to do this justice. But we need to get a little balance in the body of Christ. Because like Liam said, listen, the church is messed up right now. The temple was destroyed in 70 AD. We know this. After that, men have been in the period of restoration according to Acts 3.21. It says he, Jesus... He is being held in heaven. Jesus is confined in heaven until the restoration of all things. Mark this down. Ever since the beginning of time, we went through those period of dark ages and from the 1500s on, God has been restoring the church back to its original condition that we lost. It was lost. So we're seeking, we're digging, we're searching, we're trying to find the truth on how all the pieces of the puzzle fit together. It's extremely important because if not, you'll become so lopsided, you'll, you'll, you'll lose understanding of what the truth is of the Bible. So this is what I hope to teach a little bit today. So if you have your Bibles, please turn to the book of Genesis. So this is the covenant that God established with Abraham. It was a, a, a sign between him and the Israel people. Now go over to Joshua. Joshua, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. That is what? That is the Torah. That's what Liam said this morning. The first five books of the Bible are the Torah. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Now, after all this time from Abraham and the Israel people going into captivity, for over 400 years of captivity, they had a sign of circumcision. This was a sign of their covenant. Now, I just taught you a couple weeks ago about Gilgal. Gilgal meaning circumcision. It's a sign, sign of being sanctified and separate. So if you look at Joshua 5, verse 2, it says, At that time the Lord said to Joshua, Make flint knives for yourself. Circumcise the son of, sons of Israel again the second time. Like one time wouldn't be bad enough. They got to go in 
he has to circumcise these men a second time. So Joshua made flint knives for himself and circumcised the sons of Israel at the hill of the foreskin. And this is the reason why Joshua circumcised them. Listen to this. All the people who came out of Egypt who were males, all the men of war had died in the wilderness on the way after they had come out of Egypt. For all the people who had come out had been circumcised. So all the people who had come out of Egypt had been circumcised. They kept the covenant. But all the people born in the wilderness on the way as they came out of Egypt had not been circumcised. So God told them that this was going to be the sign that he had between Abraham and all his generation, all his, the generations. So we know for about a 400 year period, they was faithful in that. Even when they were in captivity, they were faithful in that. But for some reason, when God delivered them, when God set them free, they went back and rebelled. We know when Moses went up on the Mount Sinai to receive the Ten Commandments, they took off all their jewelry. They melted their jewelry down and made a golden calf and they worshiped the golden calf. Why would you do that? I mean, after God had met with Moses on the mountain, Moses didn't even get back down and the people were already grumbling. Taking their jewelry off and making graven images of a calf can't understand it, why they would do the things they did. Why does people want to go back to that? Just like that video of the tabernacle, did you see that? Meadow had no idea what I was preaching on today. When you saw that tabernacle up there and how you went into the holy place and you had the, the altar and you had the horns on the altar and you had the, the ashes and you had to do this and you had to do that. People get all excited about that. It's just like when we learn about Passover, when everybody wants to go back and do the Seder meal. There's, there's something about us that we just want to go back and, and be like Jews, or there's things that, that, I don't know, I guess humans enjoy. They like those kind of things. They love to make graven images. I, I don't know why, but they, but they do those kind of things. Now listen to this, verse 6. For the children of Israel walked 40 years in the wilderness. Richard, the Lord told me you were coming today. I wonder what you're waiting on. <laughs> For the children of Israel walked 40 years in the wilderness to all the people who were men of war who came out of Egypt, listen to this, were consumed. Why would the most elite men of Israel, why would the men of war, why would those men who had been faithful all those years serving God, all those men who were circumcised, all them men who were faithful, all them got men who kept God's laws, everybody who was being pleased in God's sight, all the men who listened, watched Moses do what God did through him when they were in Egypt. He saw all the miracles that God performed through Moses. They saw God part the Red Sea. They walked across the dry land. Pharaoh's army was consumed. They saw this stuff. What have you seen? You haven't seen nothing like that. I always think, why? I mean, we got a better crop covenant, better promises. Why ain't we seeing what they see? See, that's just me. I think out of the box that way. That's why I'm not that concerned about going back to the way they were. I see the mistakes they made and why they did that. I have no idea. But I know we have a better covenant based on better promises. But what are they? The church don't even know what it is today. Listen to this. They're consumed. Why? Because they did not obey the voice of the Lord. 
Do you remember when God even told Moses that he was to speak to the rock and he didn't? He just struck, he struggled with his staff. He never made it into the promised land. Why? He didn't, he didn't do what God told him to do. It was that simple. He said, because they did not obey the voice of the Lord to whom the Lord swore that he would not show them the land which the Lord had sworn to the fathers that he would give us, a land flowing of milk and honey. Then Joshua circumcised their sons, whom he raised up in their place. Listen, I'm telling you, if you don't get the job done, God has someone to replace you. That's the same for me, you, and everybody else that ever hears his teaching. God's been around a lot longer than any of us. If God willing, this building will be here a lot longer than I'm alive. And someone will come in my place. So I'm sitting here in place when Don Chapman was here for 25 years. They thought he was like Moses. He was never going to leave. But stuff happens. He raised their children in their place. For they were uncircumcised. Why? Because they had not been circumcised on the way. Once they got into the wilderness... They didn't do it anymore. So it was when they had finished circumcising all the people that they stayed in their places in the camp until they were healed. Then the Lord said to Joshua, this day I have rolled away the reproach of Egypt from you. Therefore, the name of the place is now called Gilgal to this day. Now we did a whole series on the father-son principle, the relationship of the father and the son in the kingdom of God. The Bible says that, that in the last days, people will have thousands of teachers because you could run here, there, and everywhere and get everybody's opinion on what they believe is right. But you don't have any fathers in the faith. You don't have people that you're willing to listen to. You have nobody that you're willing to submit and commit to. This is why the church is stagnant today. Because when we have a bunch of rebellious children running here, there, and everywhere, and nobody listens to the leadership. You don't even know who leadership is anymore. There's no submission. Listen, when I played football, I'm telling you this right now. If somebody sat over on the bench all the time and never did anything, and I was out there during two days for, for you know, 12 hours a day out there killing myself, me and my teammates are out there dying every single day, and there's some guy over there eating hot dogs and donuts. And then we get into a game, and then the kid goes, hey, I put me in the game, coach. I mean, how's that feel? How's that make you feel? Anybody. Bill was in the armed forces. If you're in the armed forces and you go through training, what do you think? You're over there in a foxhole where you're going through this training to be a part of God's army in whatever part you play in that army. And then you've got some guy that's not even trained like you and you think you're going to go out there and risk your life that he's going to be able to take care of your back? It don't happen that way. It's the same in the kingdom of God. The Bible says one must be found trustworthy. We got to be there for one another. We got to stick up for one another. We got to endure for one another. You know, in Hebrews 10, it says that we're to love and encourage one another to good deeds. And all the more as we see the day approaching, we're to gather together all the more. We're to encourage one another to be in church. We're to be in church together. We're to be working together. Circumcision. Go to Hebrews 3. I'm getting there, Jason. Hebrews 3. Don't let me forget. Hebrews 3. I'm getting close. Hebrews 3. Now, now did the New Testament talk about this circumcision? Now, we know, listen, people, there is a battle right now. There is a battle. <coughs> Everywhere, there's a battle regarding the Word of God on how we're to rightly divide the Word of Truth. I heard men preach this week. I mean, I heard good men of God that know the Word of God say there's no new covenant. It's all the same thing. Listen, it's not the same thing. 
This is a new covenant. It's been enacted on new promises, and there is a new priest from a new priesthood, from a new order, from a new lineage. Jesus didn't come from the, Le from the Levitical priesthood. That's who the old covenant, that's who the laws and the regulations and all the things that we hear about, that's the priesthood that it came through. Jesus didn't even come through that priesthood. Look, Hebrews 3, verse 12. Beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily why it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. You heard Liam was preaching about sin this morning? Sin is what screws you up. For we have become partakers of Christ. How? If we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast until the end. While it is said today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in rebellion. Well, what was he talking about? Who was, who was rebelling? Who was not doing what God told him to do? Verse 16. For who having heard rebelled? Who, who was it? Who could he be possibly talking about? He said, for who having heard rebel? Question mark. Indeed, was it not all? Was it not all who came out of Egypt that was led by Moses? Listen, was it not all? A L L. Is that in your Bible? Was it not all who came out of Egypt led by Moses? Did they not rebel? Absolutely they did. Now with whom was he angry for 40 years? They was in the wilderness for 40 years, remember? Was it not with those who sinned, whose corpses fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest? But to those who do not obey? So we see that they could not enter. Why? Because of their unbelief. What was their unbelief? They did perform circumcision. The one act of circumcision. That's why they couldn't get in. Now go to 1 Corinthians 13. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, Corinthians. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, Corinthians. Now we're talking about circumcision, right? Does the word contradict itself? No. No. The word does not serve, the, the word does not contradict itself. Now, 1 Corinthians 7, 17. I'm just showing you that there's a new covenant. If, if, if there's not a new covenant, the, the Bible is all screwed up. You'd be able to show 10 million contradictions in the Bible if there's not a new covenant. We have a new covenant. It's based on better promises than what they had. So if we have a new covenant, you need to ask yourself, what is it? What is the new covenant? People think they're the same. They're not the same. They're different. But as God, 1 Corinthians 7, 17, but as God has distributed to each one as the Lord has called each one, so let him walk. And so I ordain in all the churches. Paul's writing this. As anyone, was anyone called while circumcised? Was anyone called Jesus while, called to Jesus while they were circumcised? Let him not be uncircumcised. You can't undo it. Was anyone called while uncircumcised? Now this would be important. Because circumcision was the sign of the Old Testament. It was the sign of the Old Covenant. He said... Let him not become uncircumcised. Was anyone called while he was uncircumcised? Then let him not be circumcised. Well, listen, that would be a direct contradiction to the old covenant if there was not a new covenant. Because the old covenant, God's eternal, everlasting promise with Abraham was circumcision. And he, God, let the most elite men of war die in the wilderness before he let the people go into the promised land. 
Why? There was one thing. They did not circumcise their children for 40 years in the wilderness. So God did not let them go into the promised land. This is extremely important. Did they stop it then? No. Circumcision went up through John the Baptist. He was circumcised on the eighth day. Jesus was circumcised. They were all circumcised. But yet there was a change in the priesthood. So if there was a change in the priesthood, of necessity there had to take place a change in the law also. Was anyone called well uncircumcised? Let him not be circumcised. Circumcision is nothing. Well, wait a second. Circumcision was everything. Circumcision was the sign. It was the number one sign. They had to do it. Circumcision is nothing, and uncircumcision is nothing, but the command, but keeping the commandments of God is what matters. Let each one remain in the same calling in which he was called. Were you called while a slave? Don't be concerned about it. But if you can be made free, rather use it. For he who is called in the Lord while he is a slave is the Lord's freed man. Likewise, he was called while he is free is Christ's slave. I'm, I'm serious about this book. Trust me. I studied this book for 44 years every day of my life. Now we have tools to take us deeper so we have better understanding of the truth because I'm telling you, if you read it on the surface, you'll be all screwed up. You'll never understand it. You'll get Gentiles wanting to be Jews, Jews wanting to be Gentiles. You'll be so screwed up. You'll think you can fulfill the Old Testament law. You'll be running here, running there. You'll have Jews that want to be Gentiles. They'll be all grace. And then you have Gentiles wanting to be Jews. They'll be all legalistic laws. You'll be all screwed up. Go to Hebrews 6. I get a couple minutes. Hebrews 6. I'm going to jump through a couple of these. Hebrews 6. I know you guys understood that all the first time you heard it. But I think you got the gist of what I was saying. Or really what he was saying. Listen, here's where most of the church is today. This is where I was for probably 30 years of my life struggling, trying to understand the balance of the Old and the New Testament and how it pertains to us. Hebrews 6 verse 1 says this, Therefore, leaving the discussion of the elementary principles, it's like elementary school, baby school. It's like most people were in elementary school. It would be like when I say, okay, if you want to go to children's church, everybody stands up and leaves out of here. I'd be like, where's everybody going? I mean, that's how most people are today. They have a, a kindergarten, kindergarten understanding knowledge about the Bible. And listen, this is the most important book that has ever been written. This is the Word of God on paper. God who promised cannot lie. So we're to leave the elementary principles of Christ. Well, what are they? What are the elementary principles and the teachings of Christ? Of the Christ. Let us go on to perfection. What is that? Not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works. That's where most people are today. They want to hear repentance, 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 repentance. How many times can you just repent? I used to go to church and see the same people repenting over the same things every single week. They're just in bondage to whatever that is. Understand that Jesus died for your sins. I don't care what it is. Once you're sorry for that, he'll forgive you and it's time to move on. Not laying again, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and a faith toward God. We've been in a faith movement now for 50 years. The word of faith. Faith this, faith that, believe this, name that, claim this. Or of the doctrine of baptisms. Whole churches have split over baptisms. It's crazy what people do. Of the laying on of hands. Of the resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment. 
And this we will do if God permits. Hebrews 8. Well, no. Um, Hebrews 7, verse 11. Oh, man. This time just goes so fast. I'm going to go over a little bit today, Greg, and you're just going to let the second one run longer. But I get some extra time because you let the battery go dead. So I got me an extra five minutes of grace, I think. Hebrews 7, 11. Therefore, if per perfection was through the Levitical priesthood, listen, if perfection was found under the Levitical priesthood, the book of Leviticus, for under it the people received the law, what further need would there be that another priest should arise according to the order of Melchizedek and not be called according to the order of Aaron? For the priesthood being changed, the priesthood was changed. Of necessity, there also needed to be a change in the law. The, the Jews will fight you tooth and nail over this. Why? Because the covenant was written to them. The old covenant was written to them. They have every single right to stand on their covenant. They have a covenant that was written to them, an eternal everlasting covenant. It was written to them. For he, he whom these things are spoken belongs to what? Another tribe. Well, who is that? Who is he possibly talking about? He's talking about Jesus. He's saying Jesus came from another tribe, not the Levitical priesthood. He came through another lineage, which changes everything. From which no man has officiated at the altar. For it is evident that our Lord arose from Judah. Israel and Judah are not the same thing. Of which tribe Moses spoke nothing concerning the priesthood. Nothing. So there is a new covenant. Verse 18. For on the one hand there is an annulling of the former commandments. Annulling them. Taking them out of the way. They have been annulled. For on the one hand there is an annulling of the former commandments. Why? Because of its weakness. Why do we want to go back and try to perform something that was weak? You know why? Because it makes us feel good. Listen, let me tell you something. I got enough stuff to do. Do you understand that, Carol? I got enough stuff to do. I don't need anything else to do. Trust me. I'm over, I'm like this with things to do. But so when we understand these things, Okay, the Day of Atonement, the Feast of Trumpets, the Feast of Tabernacles. I mean, what are we going to do? I mean, okay, the red heifers being established and the temples being rebuilt. What are people going to do? The, the people that are tied up in this, I'm telling you prophetically what they're going to do. They're going to be going back to Israel and they're going to be sacrificing the blood of bulls and goats and they're going to be performing the things of the Old Testament just like they're trying to do today. They do not see the difference. And rightfully so to the Jews. To those that are born Jews or those that convert to Judaism, they can go back and do that and I can show you that in the scripture. But Gentiles are different than Jews. And Jesus came to, to bring in a better covenant, a new covenant. A new covenant means a what? A new covenant. It's not the old covenant. If it was the Old Covenant, we'd just have Old Covenant A and Old Covenant B. That's what God told me when I was praying about it this week. He said, if that was the case, it'd all be the same. We'd just have A and B. It'd be the same thing. But no, this is a new covenant. It has better promises. It's a different law. Annulling of the former commandments because of its weaknesses and unprofitableness. For if the law, the law made nothing perfect. On the other hand, there is a bringing in of a better hope, through which now we draw near to God. And as much as he was not made priest without an oath, for they have become priests without an oath, but he with an oath made by him who said to him, The Lord has sworn, and I will not relent. You're a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. Verse 22. By, by so much more, by so much more, Jesus has became the surety of what? A better covenant. 
I, I, I listen to guys all this week saying, because they're more Jewish, they're, they're Messianic Jews, and they focus on more the old than the new. And they don't see the difference because that's what they came out of. And they have every right to believe what they do because that's a covenant written to them. It wasn't written to us. We're totally different. And if you don't know how to write and divide the word of truth, you'll be all screwed up. There is a, by so much more, Jesus has became the surety of a better covenant. Now it goes in and tells you what all the, what all the, old, pre, the old Testament priests did in this. I haven't got time to read all that. But Hebrews 8 1 says this. Now this is the main point. This is the main point of the things which we're saying. We have such a high priest now.